President Kariz, dear Allah, it's a true pleasure to welcome you today to, to Cyprus. Despite the geographical distance that separates our countries, Cyprus and Estonia are similar in more ways than uh, meet the eye, as we started to discover already back in 1992 when we established our diplomatic relations. We are both small and resilient countries located on different edges of, of Europe. More importantly, we are two countries that ge geography has defined and continues to define their respective histories. Our people are active and in ingenious in advancing their development and that of their countries. We also share the same set of values the constant pursuit for peace and unwavering commitment to the principles of international law as the foundation that underpins the rules-based international order. Dear friends, with uh, President Kariz, we had the opportunity to discuss today in Australia our bilateral relations, European affairs, global and regional developments, as well as the Cyprus issue. Let me start with our bilateral relations. I'm very pleased to attest that the understanding and cooperation between Cyprus and Estonia across the board is stronger than ever before. This fact is reflected in the steady flow of high-level visits in uh, recent years, in the enhanced trade figures, and in the unprecedented levels of people-to-people -people contacts, which we very much welcome. We agreed to further deepen our cooperation at all uh, levels by exploring new areas such as investment, cybersecurity, and maritime affairs. In this context, I welcome the fact that President Kareis is accompanied by a sizable business delegation, the members of which will have the opportunity later today to engage with their Cypriot counterparts in a bilateral forum hosted by the Cyprus Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I also wish to highlight Estonia's excellence in digital uh, transformation and e-governance, making it a global best practice example, something that uh, I had the opportunity to realize firsthand when I visited Tallinn back in 2021. We have much to learn and gain from Estonia's example in our effort to enhance our own digital governance services, building also on the relevant memorandum of understanding that was signed in Tallinn in 2022. The situation in Ukraine, of course, was uh, an important part of our discussions. Two years since the illegal Russian invasion and continued aggression, we reiterated that illegality cannot and must not be allowed to prevail. We have an obligation to secure and safeguard Ukraine's future as a sovereign, free, and uh, prosperous nation, principles that should be defended in every instance and without any exception. To that end, today we reconfirm that we stand and we will continue to stand by Ukraine and, of course, the right side of history. We also discussed the unfolding crisis in the Middle East, in the immediate neighborhood of the European Union. We agreed on the need for urgent uh, de-escalation and relaunch of the results-oriented political horizon based on the agreed UN framework for a two-state solution. And I also stress the need for the European Union to play a leading role in these developments in cooperation with our partners the Republic of Cyprus, the, the EU member state closer to the region, having excellent relations with all neighboring countries, is working towards the creation of conditions of stability and security. And it was in this context that uh, I had the opportunity to update the president on the latest development on the Amalthea plan, the Cyprus Maritime Corridor, aiming to provide much needed humanitarian assistance in Gaza. I reiterate that this initiative, which uh, garners support from many countries and international organizations, does not aim to substitute, and it is supplementary to other efforts to deliver humanitarian assistance to all those in need. With President Kariz, we also, of course, discuss the Cyprus uh, problem as 
2024 uh, marks the sober 50th anniversary of the illegal 1974 Turkish invasion of Cyprus and the ongoing military occupation of almost 37% of the territory of the Republic of Cyprus, occupation of uh, EU territory. I, are, I reassure the President that my vision and sole pursuit from the very first day of assuming my duties as President of the Republic is to put an end to this half century of occupation, to reunify Cyprus so that all Cypriots can aspire a more brighter common future together. In the same context, I underline the importance of the European Union itself taking a more active role in contributing to these uh, efforts. The tools that the European Union has at its disposal can help us reach a mutually beneficial state of affairs for all, for the Cypriot people, for the European Union, for Turkey, for the wider region. Dear uh, President, in welcoming you again uh, to Cyprus, I would like to know that it has been 20 years since the last and actually first ever of President of Estonia visit to Cyprus in January 2004. The same year, in uh, May 2004, our two countries joined the big family of the European uh, Union, even though we were still considered new members as uh, states. 20 years on, it is truly remarkable how our countries and our relations have evolved, thanks also to our common European path and identity. This anniversary, but also your visit today, provide us with an opportunity to reflect on what has been achieved. And most importantly, what is our obligation as member states to provide an even better future for our citizens. Welcome once again, and thank you very much. Dear President, dear Nikos, esteemed journalists, I'm very pleased to visit Cyprus. I would like to sincere thank you for a very warm welcome to me and my delegation. It brings me great joy to be here during the year when both Estonia and Cyprus celebrate the 20th anniversary of joining the European Union family. This visit highlights the depth of our partnership with Cyprus and our wish to further nurture our friendly relations. We are both EU member states navigate, navigating a unique political and geographical landscape. We are both like lighthouses by the sea at the south and north end of the EU borders. The fact that the Estonian business delegation also joined me in this visit is a testament of strong interest in fostering economic cooperation. Our business delegation comprises representatives from various sectors, including digital and maritime, seeking opportunities for collaboration. I am optimistic that today's business seminar and meeting will give a positive impulse to economic ties. There are many things we could jointly do. Estonia has expressed their readiness to provide our know-how on digitalization of the public administration. I'm hoping to revitalize the digital collaboration with mutually recognized e-prescriptions serving as a tangible outcome of our cooperation, benefiting tourists visiting our countries. Our cooperation extends from the EU to the United Nations and elsewhere. We stand ready to collaborate with Cyprus in your preparations for assuming the European Union presidency in 2026. Despite being situated at opposite ends of Europe, Estonia and Cyprus share common values and confront similar challenges. As Europe grapples with international crisis, our cooperation to find remedy to what's happening in our neighborhoods becomes more crucial than ever as it was reflected in our discussions. I would also like to be clear on our stand on the reunification of Cyprus. We fully support the reunification based on bicommunal and bizonal federation in accordance with the 
relevant UN Security Council resolutions. We must all do our part to support achieving this. Russia's war in Ukraine is an aggression against all the principles we value. It is important that we continue to stand in solidarity with Ukraine, providing all the help we can. Estonia is committed to allocating 0.25% of our GDP over the next four years to bolster Ukraine's defense capabilities. I deeply appreciate the understanding and support extended by Cyprus to Ukraine. I commend Cyprus for your contribution to humanitarian demining efforts in Ukraine. Estonia is eager to collaborate with Cyprus to double our efforts to assist Ukraine. In addition, it is essential that we collectively endeavor to hold Russia accountable for its aggression and crimes against humanity. We must support the implementation of the Ukraine's peace formula centered on the principles of the United Nations Charter and the restoration of territorial integrity and sovereignty. Over the last six months, we have seen the escalation of a conflict between Israel and Hamas. The humanitarian situation in Gaza remains dire. We highly value all the efforts Cyprus has taken to open a humanitarian corridor, Almantea Initiative, to deliver much needed additional assistance by sea. I echo the President's sentiment that the Almantia journey is one of hope and humanity. The destabilizing developments in Africa remain deeply concerning. The impact extends from Mediterranean to our region. Migrant flows coming from instable areas and their instrumentalization as part of a hybrid warfare, warfare against our societies is unacceptable. I reaffirm Estonia's full support for Cyprus as a frontline member state facing migration challenges. Estonia has actively contributed expertise and resources to EU external border protection through Frontex missions, including in Cyprus. Estonia's overall contribution to Frontex is one of the highest per capita in the EU. Once again, allow me to thank you, dear Nikos, for the warm welcome extended to me. I am confident that this visit will further strengthen the already excellent bilateral relations between Estonia and Cyprus, two close European partners. Thank you. I'm Stella Mikhail from Cyprus Broadcasting Corporation. My question is for both president. War in Ukraine and Middle East created a new international environment uh, of instability and security challenges. It seems that some European countries discuss for a more dynamic role um, regarding the war in Ukraine, and they discuss for military help uh, beside the economic help they give. It's a needed choice, or EU should keep its involvement on economic level. And regarding Middle East, it's time for European Union for a more active role, for example, through Cyprus initiative with Plan Amalfia, for humanitarian aid to Gaza. Thank you. On the, on the EU front and the support of the European Union towards uh, Ukraine, as I, as, I have, as I have mentioned, Cyprus from the very beginning, it was on the right side of the history. We know very well what it means, invasion and, uh, and occupation. And uh, we believe that the European Union should uh, use all means available in order to face uh, Russian aggression. Of course, each member state has its own uh, capabilities that can uh, offer to the European Union in its effort with other international partners because the European Union needs the support of other uh, international partners in order to face the situation in, in Ukraine. Regarding the, the situation in, uh, in, uh, in Gaza, uh, Cyprus is the closest EU member state of, uh, of, uh, in the region, a country with excellent relations with all neighbor countries. We're trying our best in order to face the humanitarian challenges in, uh, in Gaza. But at the same time, we want to see much more EU involvement uh, in the region. Uh, I, have to, I have to praise the, the fact that the president of the European Commission, before two weeks, was visiting Egypt 
as a clear sign of uh, EU involvement in the region. And I think we need much more uh, involvement. And I hope that pretty soon we'll be in a position to visit the other countries of the region together with the president in, uh, of the commission. For example, Lebanon, which uh, is facing uh, a lot of challenges and also is something that is affecting Cyprus and affecting the European Union. And I'm talking about the, human, about the migration crisis. Thank you for the question. I mean, first uh, answer to the Ukrainian issue is that Estonia has been supporting Ukraine from the very, very beginning of its escalation of the war, uh, militarily, humanitarian aid, uh, as well as economically. And we continue to do so. We are a small country, but what we can do, we can just give examples. And we have started already to rebuild or reconstruct Ukraine. We have built uh, kindergarten in Ukraine, also building beaches and, and so forth. So this is what we should do. And of course, to um, ask other European countries to, uh, to give what's needed to Ukraine. I mean, Ukraine, Ukraine needs uh, ammunition, first, first of all. This is what should provide um, all your European countries who has uh, as, uh, the possibility to do so. So this is what uh, we should do. And uh, to end this war. That's, that's the most important thing, to end this war in Ukraine. It doesn't affect only Ukraine, but it does affect also uh, the whole uh, Europe, the whole Western world, to be honest. And as far as Gaza is concerned, uh, we really appreciate the initiative, what you have done with this corridor to, uh, to, to Gaza sector and uh, to help this, uh, these people who are in, in need and to continue to do so. Estonia is doing uh, the same via, via Frontex. And uh, again, give example to our European, European countries to end this horrible uh, conflict uh, in Gaza as well. Hello, um, I'm Ivi Andreu from the Cyprus News Agency. Uh, my question is addressed to both presidents. Um, so have you discussed specific ways that you can elaborate on with regard to strengthening bilater bilateral relations in the fields of economy and investments, but as well as tourism. We discuss uh, ways how to enhance our bilateral relations. As I mentioned, we have very good bilateral relations, but there are a lot untapped potentials, especially on uh, on issues of uh, uh, cybersecurity, dig digitalization, maritime, and of course uh, tourism. And um, uh, the fact that the president is in Cyprus with a business uh, delegation, I think it's a clear indication of the interest of, uh, of your business community for investing in Cyprus. And I'm looking forward to reciprocate my visit, uh, coming in Tallinn with a Cypriot business delegation in order to create the conditions for our business people to, to work together. I think it's an important thing that uh, your people are going to visit Estonia because we can come here and tell the stories, but uh, it's important to come and see. And of course, we have something to share with you, and the same is, uh, is uh, opposite. That means, uh, of course, tourism is one thing and connection. I, we mentioned and discussed about uh, direct flights from, from Tallinn to, to, to Cyprus and, and uh, vice versa, so that we could learn uh, from each other, and, and not only in a touristical way, but also uh, in different other cultural, let's say, uh, exchange and so forth. So uh, I wouldn't say it's a beginning, but we are a long way to go to, uh, to uh, make our relations even better. Thank you.